In this video, you can watch how I create a non-representational sculpture using air dry clay. I am all set up and ready to begin creating my organic sculpture. And I have all my materials here. I have my air dry clay. I have a little cup of water to help secure the clay together and to soften it up if it starts to dry out. I have a little toothpick that I can use to score the clay or to create texture in the clay. I have my sketch so that I can refer to what it is I'm trying to create. And in my case, my sketch has at least 10 forms in it, which I know is something required of me for this sculpture project. And I have Ziploc bags. I have a small one in case I wanna save clay that I'm not finished using. And then I have a large one that I can use to wrap up my sculpture and uh, make sure that it does not dry out prematurely. Because this air dry clay, it needs to dry slowly, just like regular ceramic clay that we would work with and fire in the kiln. So we have to make sure that we keep it covered when not being used if we want it to stay workable. And we have to make sure that we keep it covered at least partially throughout the drying process so that we don't get cracks as it dries. Because as it dries, it will shrink. Actually, this, and this clay shrinks more than you would think. I, I'm gonna say it probably shrinks about 20 maybe even 25%, so you will notice a uh, noticeable size difference as it dries out. Since we don't have a lot of clay here, we're gonna be working on very small sculptures. So when I get started, the base that I create, I'm going to make that base using just one little packet. And if you're someone who is in person with me, you won't get your clay in these little packets, you'll get yours from a big tub However, I will help you still gauge the amount that you should use based on how much I give you during each class. So let's get started. I'm gonna open this up. And I'm going to make my sculpture just using the clay in the small packets so that you can see how much clay um, I, you know, that I would need to create my sculpture and just so that you can see kind of the size that you'll be working with. So as you begin to mold the clay, you might notice that it's, it's not super soft. It's, it's definitely, if you bend it, it will start to crack like that. Um, this, this has a very interesting consistency to it. I think it's very similar to some homemade salt dough clays that I've tried before in my life. So um, if you feel like it's a little bit too dry for your liking, then just dip your finger into your water and you can just massage a little bit of that water in. I think when you add water to this clay, it starts to almost feel like glue. And so that will definitely help you when you are trying to secure pieces together. Let's look at some tools we can use with this clay, both at home and in the classroom. We could roll the clay out using a marker or a pencil that does not have any texture to it, right? We could also use a knife if we wanted to cut. Now, if you have an X-Acto knife at home, you could use that. We have clay tools in the classroom that could be used as well. This could help you get nice geometric shapes and forms. So this clay does cut very nicely. You can get really nice corners and edges using a knife like that. Okay, as you do mold your clay, cut it, things like that, you're not gonna wanna get rid of anything, especially those of you working from home who have just those six packets, every little bit you're going to want to keep. So I'm actually going to take this and roll it into a ball here. And as you can see, it's starting to dry already. So I'm gonna dip my finger in, get that wet and just kind of mold it between my fingers. I know I'm gonna need some 
forms like that for mine. You can always take clay and put it into your bag to save it. Wrap it up so that it won't dry out until you're ready to use it. So at this point, I have created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven forms with my clay, and I still actually have two packets left, so I have room to continue. Now, what I need to do is I need to start refining these forms a bit, and the clay is starting to get a little bit dry, so I've got to make sure that I am, you know, doing this quickly, also adding water as needed, and then I can begin to attach pieces together. So first I'm just going to start by refining some forms. I could use some tools as well as my finger to smooth things out. This clay does really well when you compress it. So when you are, anytime you're pressing it against a flat surface, that's going to really allow you to get out cracks and bumps. Uh, same with your fingers. If you're working with your fingers and you, you're kind of pressing it inwards and together, that's going to help it. If you just bend it, it is, it is going to crack on you. It's going to break. It's going to kind of crumble. And that's where compression and then water will help you out. All right, now I wanna work on assembling this together and uh, show you how to do that. So first, I did decide to make a larger base. I actually had, I had two left over, so I put two of these together to create a larger base. So I just think that's gonna work better for my piece and I had enough of the clay, so I went for it. All right, so again, I'm gonna look at my Sketch. So what I'm trying to do is piece these individual kind of moon-shaped, canoe-shaped forms together. And so I'm going to look at that and kind of set my first piece down and, and see kind of where I want it to go. So if I want it to go right here, I'm going to begin by placing some water in that area, placing some water on the connection point and then I'm going to score it just like I would if I was using uh, ceramic clay that I would plan on firing in the kiln. So just because this is air dry clay doesn't mean that I don't have to score and slip. I still need to score and slip this too. Wiggle this into place, give it a little squeeze, press down. Okay, next I have another piece that's gonna go over here. So first I'll put a little water down. Put water on the side that's connecting. Where it's connecting, I'm gonna score. So lines in one direction, followed by lines in the opposite direction. Same on here. A little extra water. So just like with any kind of clay, I say slip, score, and slip some more. Ooh, the sculpture, it really helps to look at it from all angles, so it's sticking a little bit down. I'm gonna turn it and kind of start 
start seeing how it looks from different angles. I don't want it to stick down. Something I can do is place down, place down a piece of paper towel here. Now it won't stick. Okay, and I'm gonna continue to build now and I'll speed up the video. So as you can see, I have used some paper towels to help support my sculpture while it's beginning to dry. Once I'm able to move the paper towels without it falling apart, I can then start to refine some areas even a little bit more and keep it without the paper towels. We're just gonna leave it sit here for a little bit and let it begin to harden. At this point, I have finished building my sculpture, but I really need to be careful with it because without the paper towels, this area here is gonna start to collapse and this area here will start to collapse down. So by carefully rolling up and placing paper towels where the clay needs some support, I can help make sure that it dries the way I want it to stay. And I want it to dry out slowly, so I'm gonna take this Ziploc bag and I'm gonna place it carefully on top. Now, if this one's too small, there's a larger one, or I could wrap it with um, saran wrap, or I could use a plastic grocery bag. Let's see if I can, this might work. It might help keep my paper towel where I want it to. So again, at this point, I'm finished building. I'm not gonna be attaching anything else. I just wanna make sure that this dries the way I have placed it. Work with it a bit and I'm gonna just check on it and make sure it doesn't start to slump. If I was not finished with my sculpture yet, that's when I would need to really wrap it up thoroughly. I would need to put it in an airtight Ziploc bag, zip it up completely so that no air could get to it. In this case, air can get in from underneath the bag, but that's okay, because like I said, I do want this to dry out now, just slowly. drying for about 48 hours partially wrapped in plastic, you should be able to take your sculpture out of plastic wrap and let it dry out completely on its own. At that point in time, it should be able to stand upright without any propping up using paper towels. And if you notice any markings in the clay that you'd like to get rid of, at this point in time, you would wanna use some sandpaper to try to sand it out and smooth it down. I hope this video has helped you feel informed and confident about how to work with air dry clay to create a non-representational sculpture. Thanks for watching.